consider it to be a cultural tragedy that so few are familiar with the name Jeff Buckley. I've been an avid listener to Buckley since my brother introduced his music to me in middle school. Specifically, he introduced me to his popular cover of the Leonard Cohen song, Hallelujah. I've done extensive research on his life because of my interest in his music, and today I plan to inform you all on Jeff Buckley's upbringing, early career, rise to popularity, death, and legacy. Jeffrey Scott Buckley was born November 17th of 1966 in Anaheim, California to Timothy Buckley and Mary Guybert. Tim Buckley was a popular folk singer and jazz performer, and Mary Guybert was a poor girl of Zonian descent. Zonian meaning those American immigrants to this Panama Canal Zone. Buckley was abandoned by his father and raised by his mother and stepfather. According to The Sun Also Rises by Matt Deal, published on October 20th, 1994, The Rolling Stone, Buckley saw his father only one week when he was eight years old. His stepfather was Ron Moorhead, and he had a half-brother named Corey Moorhead. Growing up, Buckley went by Scotty Moorhead, derived from his middle name and his stepfather's surname, but chose to use his birth name after his father's passing to respect him. Buckley's musical career was limited to playing in New York cafes and recording with very small artists until gaining popularity at Sine, a popular Manhattan coffee house. He, during this period, he toured with a uh, well-known local singer, reggae, reggae singer Shinehead, and he also regularly performed with the rock group Gods and Monsters in venues around New York. Jeff recorded his first album, Grace, on August 23, 1994, Grace was produced by Andy Wallace, and Buckley hired Mick Grondel to play bass on the record, and Matt Johnson to play drums. Buckley spent the remainder of his tragically short career touring around the world and recording future albums intermittently. He did a 10-day tour of Europe in March of 1994, and then he later went on to do a full European tour in August during which he visited the United Kingdom, Ireland, Scandinavia, and Germany. He later went on to tour in both Canada and Japan. Buckley's rising stardom was cut short when he was in a recording session with his band in Memphis. He took a break from riding to go on a solo swim in the Mississippi River, and he was never seen again. In the words of David Thigpen, his article, The Troubled Death of Jeff Buckley, published on April 12, 2001, by the Rolling Stone. Buckley was living out a destructive psychodrama that gave his music unique energy, and it also led his famous reckless streak. Most sources depict Buckley's death as a drunken suicide, but it could also have been an accident related to drug use or a normal swimming accident. Regardless of the cause of his death, it remains a tragedy that put an end to the career of one of the most talented musicians of the 1990s. I have provided to you all a synopsis of the upbringing, early career, rise to popularity, death, and legacy of Jeffrey Scott Buckley. While Buckley's career was short, his influence on the music industry and his impact on fans like me continue to keep his memory alive. 